And then, uh, so following those Japanese pioneers, Korean uh, fashion designers also went to Paris. Um, and they, they came mostly in late 1990s. That usually follows their country's economic development. So um, late 1990s, uh, Andre Kim uh, is another name. And then Lee Young-hee, for example, she's a very uh, important designer. So uh, she originally studied fashion design, and then um, she was creating uh, Hamburg. Uh, but around the 1990s, she came up with this type of really transformative Hamburg uh, that would be suitable for Parisian fashion shows. Um, that is totally different uh, audiences. So in a way, she designed these clothes uh, clothes in order to be attracted to uh, or to be um, intriguing to uh, fashion critics in Paris. So obviously her main clients, like wealthy families who need a handbook for their family celebrations, like weddings, uh, you know, family gatherings, holidays so for those reasons, they are not going to wear this <laughs> in order to go to the family gathering or let's say their daughter's wedding uh, events. Uh, you still need a very conservative dress, but Lee young -hee created these new style that are more suitable for party culture of the West uh, in order to make Hamburg uh, as part of uh, haute couture. So um, her, her um, presence has been recognized. So that if you see Karl Lagerfeld, uh, he just died, right? couple of years ago, right? Um, the, the designer for Chanel, uh, he was then uh, inspired by Lee young -hee style new uh, Hamburg language. And this is his, uh, Karl Lagerfeld's creation. So um, the uh, patchwork, this is also the Korean style gift wrap composed of various geometric patterns. Um, these are in the individual pieces originally left to overclap as a patchwork. Um, so Karl Lagerfeld created this, but the, obviously the necklines, right, the V necklines and long sleeves, um, these are the new language that Karl Lagerfeld acquired by looking at Durumagi and other examples. Um, but uh, Lee Young-hee in Korea, she got a lot of criticisms because some traditionalists within Korea, they thought these kind of uh, revealing, basically this, the, this model didn't have a jacket, right? <laughs> That's what they are saying. So um, this um, intentional exposure uh, and the skimpy clothes. And also when Lee Young-hee refers to Korean tradition, mostly she's referring to either kissing or uh, entertainment class. So that also bothered a lot of um, traditionalists, uh, you know, they say, well, you cannot really ruin our traditional vocabulary. Uh, but me personally, um, as, a, as a curator and art critic of contemporary art, uh, I praise Lee Young-hee's uh, ambitious and audacious uh, creation. Uh, tradition is not set in stone. Tradition must, must be transformative. It changes over time. Uh, and that's what I try to teach you. You know, is there any like a monolithic idea of Chinese traditional clothes, right? If you ever taken this class, you should ask, which period are you referring to, right? Because Tang Dynasty Chinese clothes is very different from Qing Dynasty Chinese clothes. So when you say Chinese national dress, which period or which ethnic identity are you trying to refer to, right? So that, that's a smart question to go. So anyhow, Lee young -hee's case, um, she um, is a pioneer in modernizing Hanbo uh, for, the, for, the, for the scope of high fashion, uh, high fashion world uh, and globalizing Korean clothing to the Western world. Um, so that's a very important uh, uh, contribution. But unfortunately, Lee Young-hee, she uh, died rather prematurely. I think she had a heart attack and died 
in the middle of her 60s. That was already about 10 years ago. Um, but now she gave a large collection of her clothes that you see in the background um, to where did she, uh, to uh, a decorative art museum in Paris. Um, so these are some of her clothes. The jogori, in old ways, you, you need a jogori here, <laughs> but you, there is nothing. So it's more like a tube top style dress. Uh, but you can definitely feel that um, the the silhouette of a Korean uh, clothing, right? So uh, uh, this type of chest uh, bend, uh, you know, chest bend area for the skirt is either painted or it has some, you know, some you know or, uh, ornamentation or embroidery. And then this is a norige. Norige is a hanging ornament. Norige. Um, so traditionally, in order to add a little bit of embellishment, as you can see here, uh, the norige, you only need one. <laughs> uh, and norige is uh, tied on your uh, ribbon here for the chagori's ribbon. So it may dangling just one. Uh, but it shows that you are the, let's say, lady of the house. Uh, so even though the color would be the same as your servant, you are obviously the lady of the house. And, um, you know, you have... Uh, either pearl or what is it, uh, coral. You know, do you see the sea, sea rock, like a coral, or, uh, you know, silver, gold, jade, you know, like a, so sometimes the norige itself is, uh, let's say, 20 times more expensive than the entire garment. It's almost like a accessories, right? Like a diamond ring kind of thing. So anyhow, um, so norige is used very creatively. Uh, and then here, this is what you use for the wedding gown, um, but uh, she used it, the head, head decorative piece. 